Most biotech professionals, including me, are from middle class. And that means most of us can only dream of getting a job and probably having a good life. But then I think, how is billionaires like Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Kiran Majumdar Shah, New Barafian, how they became what they became, right? Even they must have done something right. So the sad part is, in our education system, we are not taught how to become rich. Rather, we are taught these are the technical things you need to do in your job, right? So at the end of our degree, we become job-oriented person. So we look for a job. But today we are going to ask questions. How Dr. Kiran Majumdar Shah, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, New Barafian became so rich? And we will find incidents from their life. We will try to understand what exactly they did right and what can we do in our life to become rich. All right, so let me start by first talking about humans, right? Because anything which we create, buy or sell, humans, right? So humans have weaknesses, has to be connected to. One of the weaknesses is hunger. So of course, there is a food business and then there is a disease. That's where we have pharma business or the biopharmaceutical business. There, there is uh, the software requirement of software. So there is the software companies and IT companies and there are multiple human weaknesses. For that, there can be a solution with the help of any tool. So more or less, first thing you'll have to do is to create a list of human weaknesses and then identify what all human weaknesses Microsoft, which is Bill Gates, Elon Musk, which is Tesla, or you know whatever companies he has invested in, for example, Neuralink, or New Barafian, who is the founder and chairman of Moderna Group, and Dr. Kiran Majumdar Shah, who is from India, and she is the biotech wizard of India, right? So what exactly they did right in these human weaknesses? And we will be unfolding each one of them for you slowly. Now let's start with Bill Gates. Now, one thing we all know about Bill Gates is he was too early to the party. Okay. That time computing was a trend, a rising trend. For example, right now AI in biology is a rising trend. So he was early to the party. Okay. So he didn't just build the software. I wrote down that we see a, a computer on every desk and in every home. We saw the, the microprocessor, the chip that drives it improving so rapidly and it would be the, the tool of the information age. He solved a massive global problem because the operating system which was there was, was MS-DOS or uh, the Windows which he created, that became the basis on the top of which other applications could be built. So Bill Gates solved a big problem which was a user interface for the computers. So that was when he was too early to the party, okay? That is one secret which you should learn from Bill Gates. Next, let's come to Elon Musk. Now, this guy is not early to the party, but he picks up problems which is impossible to solve. Our brain has evolved to discard information that it thinks has no relevance. What are those? Space rockets which can be reused. You have refills, right? For a pen, why can't we refill the rocket, right? Space rockets which can be reused, electric cars so, so that we don't need to depend on the petroleum products or the brain machine interface, why we need a keyboard and a mouse, why can't we directly talk to the computers? So these are impossible looking problems. So first guy, Bill Gates, solved the problem by being early to the party and he picked a trend which was computing. Elon Musk did something different which was he put the impossible looking problems and tried to solve it. Now we'll come to the third one. Moderna founder, Nuber Afian and Stephanie Bansel. Now what they did? The pioneering company in mRNA medicines which created and developed a life-saving vaccine faster than any other in human history. They focused on one thing, a new technology, right? They worked on mRNA-based therapies long before it became mainstream. They believed in one technology and this worked on it, perfected it and revolutionized the vaccines and the therapeutics market. So again, they were early to the market. They picked up a technology which was just getting started, but nobody had worked on it and that's how he became rich. Now we'll come to Dr. Kiran Majumdar Shah. She had to go through a lot more struggle than the other three because they were in US. She was right here in India, in India and she was too young. She just started her career. I really believe that anyone who has the ability to take on a challenge and to take on risk can actually become an entrepreneur. And she identified a gap in enzyme production. So Biocon Limited UK had a problem and she started developing it right here in India at a cheaper cost. And then slowly she kept multiplying. She got into biosimilars and became the pioneer of cost-effective biotech solution. So others were focusing on costly solutions while Dr. Shaw built 
uh, empire around cheaper products which still has the same quality or a better quality can be sold to third world, world countries also. So the lesson which you, we have for biotech professionals is stop ch chasing small goals, stop chasing jobs, start looking at bigger problems, high impact problems and use technology which is trending right now. For example, bioinformatics and AI and then utilize that to reduce the cost of treatment, accelerate the treatments, costly technologies can be replaced by cheaper technologies and you can get into diagnostics using AI and bioinformatics, you can get into data analysis, you can get, get into bioinformatics and AI ML uh, in biology software development, you could be developing therapies which is cheaper because you use technology and it can be sold to third world countries. You support the poor and you also become rich. I think that's what Dr. Kiran Majumdar Shah did. Let's come to the next part what you have to do next. So once you have learned the lessons from their life, the next thing you have to know is they were leaders, okay? Whether it is Elon Musk or Dr. Kiran Majumdar Shah, whether it is Nubar Afyan or Bill Gates, they were leaders, okay? And they led by example. They were not just inventors, they were re leaders who were also great storytellers, right? They could tell their story and tell people that, hey, I have this mission, would you like to work with me? And people followed, right? They have a massive fan following and that's what they made science attractive, okay? They created stories around their products. Moderna, for example, didn't sell a mRNA. They sold a hope for fast vaccines, which can be much more efficient. Let's talk about Dr. Kiran Majumdar Shah. She was unstoppable, right? At the age of 21, she was starting with Biocon uh, and she convinced the investors at that age and the government for uh, affordable biotech solutions and she got a lot of support also from the ecosystem. So the trick here is you have to learn to communicate learn to pitch your ideas, learn storytelling, learn how to commercialize your research and you have to understand the regulatory pathways around your product. You have to team up with people who have market access and you have to win licensing deals faster. Okay, you, you must remember Biocon has so many types with Bristol Mayor Squibb and various other Mylan and, and for example. So what they did, they didn't just, you know, came up with one idea, they came up with a series of ideas which was built on the top of each other, right? So Elon Musk didn't stop at Tesla, he went for Neuralink, he went for uh, SpaceX, right? So for example, any other, any of these leaders, they didn't just create a product, they created a platform. Let's talk about it now. Microsoft, Bill Gates created the platform called as operating system called as Windows, right? Every PC cannot run without it. So that's a platform. On the top of it, other softwares will run, right? Next with Musk's Tesla. So he created Giga Factories, which controls the battery production. So if the battery production is in, under his control, of course, his Tesla cars will be cheaper. Now coming to Moderna, they didn't just create one vaccine, they built a mRNA platform which could be used to develop multiple vaccines, multiple therapies and multiple drugs. Coming to Biocon, they built the biosimilar manufacturing capabilities, captured the global markets while the other players were still sleeping, they were early to the market. The lesson you can learn from these biotech pros or billionaires, focus on platform technologies. Bioinformatics pipelines you can create, CRISPR platforms you can create, mRNA delivery systems you can create, AI dr drug discovery tools you can create, something that can solve problems for many people and other people can use that platform to build on the top of it. That's how you become rich, right? Now, next part, you, you have to understand that they were not just sitting idle in their offices, they were collaborating. They were winning licensing deals, they were scaling up while they were you know, building their empire. So Moderna collaborated with NIH. NIH is a government organization in US. Elon Musk works very closely with NASA. The biggest customer of Elon Musk is uh, SpaceX is NASA. Government, battery supply. So he has partnered with them. Gates partnered with IBM initially and later on with hundreds of um, original device manufacturers who started putting windows by default in the laptops, right? Next, Kiran Majumdar Shah. She leveraged her global reach with partnerships with Mylan, Amgen, Bristol Mayor Squibb. And she also found out an opportunity with a CRO and she went ahead with Sinjin, right? So they networked like crazy, collaborated, traveled, didn't try to just build everything from scratch. They took inspiration and took help from others. They looked for licensing deals, they did joint ventures and they did partnerships and successfully delivered. So now coming to the last part, all these guys didn't solve a problem for one country, 
right? If you're trying to solve problems for one country, you cannot become like them. If you want to become like them, then you have to solve the global problems. Gates went global from day one with his coding skills. Tesla sells worldwide. Moderna vaccines are reaching every country on the globe. So is Biocon. It is no longer just an Indian company. It is a global biosimilar giant. So the mind shift has to shift now from a middle class person. You have to think about global. Don't load, limit your idea only to your state, city, country. You have to think of the world. The world is the open market. What can you create which can be sold to the world? Just from your lab, just from your computer. If you start thinking globally, you will switch from a regular guy to a global entrepreneur. A global giant is listening to me right now. Now, you have to understand money also because you have to talk to investors if you're going to do this, right? Whatever you do, remember that don't dilute. If you start a company, don't dilute too fast. Don't take in too many investors unless you have perfected the product. Gates didn't dilute his ownership in Microsoft. Musk still owns his stakes in Zip2, PayPal, Tesla, SpaceX, and he keeps multiplying his wealth with equity. Moderna went for an IPO, but the founder equity became a billion dollar stock. So is Kiran Majumdar Shah. She is still controlling a significant stake in Biocon. So you, if you start a company, make sure that you hold a majority stake in the company. Don't dilute fast, right? Now, the big trick is learn how biotech startups work. And the best way is to come to Bengaluru, understand how these guys are working. If you can understand that fast, you will understand how funding works. You will understand how much equity to give and you'll understand how royalties work, right? Now, the, to summarize, the reason I made this video is to help you shift your mindset and start thinking big. Start solving bigger problems and understand that you are capable of much more than what you're doing, right? The only problem is nobody is talking to you this way. Nobody is telling you that you were not born to just uh, do some job. You were born to solve global problems. And if each one of you, or even if 1% among you, tries to do that, you don't just become billionaires. You give jobs to a million people. That's what these guys are doing. Whether it is Microsoft, SpaceX, Tesla, or uh, Neuralink, or Dr. Kiran Majumdar Shah's Biocon, Sinjin, uh, the conglomerate, right? They are giving jobs to millions of people, right? So, the idea behind making this video is to support you, think, help you think differently and uh, make you understand that the youth of today is going to take the biotech industry forward. So stop thinking small, start thinking big and go for it. My best wishes, blessings and support is always for you. If you're starting a company, come meet me. I will help you in with whatever resources I have or whatever I have, network I have and uh, with the help of iBiome's network or Biotechnica's network, we are right there to support you as an entrepreneur or as a dreamer or a scientist, whatever you want to be. Remember, today's starting is going to take you to something big. But the question is, are you ready? If yes, let me know in the comment section. And thank you so much for watching this video till now. And I'll see you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining. Take care. Bye-bye.